so here we are, brand new cruiser. It has been fitted with uh, the most accessories we've ever done in a build and I'm very proud of how it's turned out. This is the best one yet, so to speak, and it's definitely, definitely a bit of a showstopper, this one. Um, I don't know where to start with the video, so I'll just start with a little bit of a walk around and get you guys um, interested before I go into detail. So, um, yeah, it's pretty sexy. We've got a lot of new features on here, and the owner has let me make a lot of the decisions myself, like um, powder coating all the little bits of alloy black and uh, a few little things like that. He chose the wheels and tyres and the suspension and the interior. We haven't touched the interior yet. That's going to be stage two. And we also have a canopy, the most pimped out canopy we've ever done. That is currently being manufactured now. So uh, the interior and canopy will be stage two. Owner's cool with that. The vehicle is already registered. So he's going to take this home tomorrow and just drive it around town until his canopy's ready. At that stage, I think we're going to be doing some seats and a lot of interior work, some um, Department of Interior, stuff like that. So, um, all right, we might as well start at the front. Starting at the front, we've got the ARB Deluxe Bar, um, Summit Bar, I think it's called now, with these 63mm um, side steps and brush bars. We have um, powder coated the side steps black, just because there's no other silver on the car, really, and um, yeah, to go along with the black side steps, we've also done the tray as well. So the tray and inside here, it's all done black and obviously black rims, roof racks and pretty much everything else is black. It still has pops of um, chrome like the stainless steel drop sides and the locks and it just ties in well with the handles. We weren't going to go overboard and powder coat all the little all the little bits black because I think that's just trying a bit too hard. Um, okay, we've got the Safari R Max snorkel and it's also got the new EC Safari Safari, uh, Safari um, ECU as well. So a little bit of engine work. He is going to be waiting for his um, thousand K service, and then he will be doing a front mount in the cooler and possibly a bigger turbo it does have uh, exhaust already which is part of the uh, max um, kit and the clutch as well so we've changed the headlight bulbs to leds and the parkers just to get rid of that horrible yellow and we've got the worn the worn winch in there with the worn um worn rope which was like nearly a thousand dollars and we've got the ultra hook there as well so that's a really nice front end. Not my choice of spotties, but um, he already had them fitted. Same with the CB. Okay, up the top. Up the top, we've got the steady 40 inch light bar and the little seven inch uh, steadies on an external switch, which is becoming one of our features. Everyone loves that. Great little work lights, um, camping, great for camping. You don't need the key in the ignition and the switch is not very noticeable so for anyone um, you don't have to worry about people really getting up there and fiddling with that when the car's locked we've got the ocam electric mirrors uh, yep got the side steps again moving right along and then the tray this is our standard cruiser tray with our um, Standard headboard which matches our canopy uh, Also standard with our cruiser trays is the um, spare tire holders are sort of built into the headboard. So um, There's no extra work related to getting that tires bolted on and then when the canopy goes on the tires Just go to the back of the canopy and then the canopy will butt up right up to here. So Another steady light there, which is on an external switch That's a nice little bright little bastard uh, the wiring does go into the frame so there's no 
horrible cable ties going down the back of your headboard. Stainless steel fittings, all stainless steel bolts as well. So um, the whole tray can basically be pulled apart with only a handful of tools. If you look closely, they're all um, M6 stainless steel. And looking under here as well, they're all stainless steel M6. So pulling your tray apart um, it can be done on the side of the road. If you do happen to damage um, a mudguard or a toolbox, for example, you can ring us up and order a new one. Um, we have all this done on CAD files, so getting replacement parts is possible. And these are aluminium, so um, yeah, they're easily to re be replaced. Coming around the back, this one has been fitted with aftermarket parking sensors and they are connected into the, up in the dash there, you have an audible little beep beep and it also has a little display too to show you how close you are to um, obstacles as such. Um, coming around this side, same goes. We've got the same steady lights up there. Steady lights here and the secret little switch. Um, the good thing about that switch being there is you can actually turn it on when you're in the driver's seat, which um, I think that's pretty handy to have when you are camping or looking for something in the dark while you're driving, hunting perhaps. Um, okay, so we've also installed uh, eight rock lights under the tray. They are very neatly tucked in under there. I don't know if you can see that little rock light there. They're all built in underneath the car and uh, tucked away uh, so tightly they're even hard to find. Let me turn them on for you. We've just put a little switch here in the dash. Okay, so now we've got the rock lights on. They've been positioned in such a way that um, you don't get any shadow from the wheels and you can even see the chassis rails just there in the shadow so I don't think you could ask for a better um, spread of light and I see a lot of people sticking them up in here I think it's just a waste of time because all you're gonna see is the top of the wheel and then you're gonna have this huge huge big shadow here of your wheel so if you put them uh, in front and behind the wheels it is much better much better for um obviously seeing the road and also lighting up the bottom of your vehicle so we've got the j-max steering dampener well the king steering dampener but it's been done uh, in the j-max kit uh, nice and tidy workshop floor <laughs> might as well add that on there we've got the bash also got a black bash plate and recovery hook at the front um coming right along again the rock lights actually light up the wheel arches too. They're lighting up everything really. This car is absolutely spotless. Obviously being brand new car, which we love working on. So, um, loving working on new cars. Okay, looking under here, you can see the 60 litre water tank. And we have a strainer there built in. And we have now updated the, um, water tank to have a higher breather point which is located down in the gap there it is a one-way valve you can't even I can't even see it down there but that's built in there to give the water tank a higher breather point and to not allow any dust in there either and you can see the water pump just sitting there these wheel arches will have a piece of rubber put in there to stop any mud getting up under your tray I just have left that off at the moment just to show you this video We've got the torque exhaust. Uh, you can see this little rock light here. This little rock light here, that's for the reverse circuit. This is standard on all our cruiser trays. We have two little rock lights at the back, which also work with these and these reverse lights as well. But um, obviously, because the tray is so high, these reverse lights don't show any light to the ground. So if we put these rock lights on the reverse signal underneath, um, you, you can see the road good. We also have put them, we also put them under here as well. So this is the rock light for the rock light circuit and then you have another one here for reverse. Plenty of lights, 
can't have too many. Okay, we have the um, Bush Ranger Revo winch, 12,000 pound, sitting at the back here, and we've upgraded it to the Factor 55 um, winch hook. Um, three and a half ton tow bar, pretty standard. Brown Davis, 185 litre tank, and the J-Max coil conversion with the uh, poly bags inside. Uh, we have con controlled the poly bags from inside the toolbox, which I'll show to you soon. But it's a very tight fit under here, and it's very neatly packed in. We've got the um, electrical subboard standard on our cruiser trays now, and also the two aluminium air tanks with stainless steel braided lines tucked in there for the compressor system. All right, where are we? We've also got the a water filter right here. This is a pre-filter. This this is, uh, water system has a um, this has a pump sucking water into the tank, so you can fill up from any uh, dam or water stagnant water source, dam or a creek or a bucket, whatever you want. You can see the fuel fuel filling system there, stainless steel hose uh, pipe going into the tank, and. Again, let's have a look under here. It's every man's dream looking under here, all this money. Hopefully the owner uses it. If not, good luck to him. It's his car, he can do what he wants with it, but um, he can afford it, so why not? Okay, the tray sides, they just drop down like a normal tray side. They do have rubbers built in. So um, there's no rubbing, there's no rattles, and our black powder-coated aluminium flooring. This flooring is removable at any time. If you ever need to work on the car or if you want to give it a good clean, you can easily just remove the flooring sheets yourself just with a formula Allen key and you'll be able to get that off. I've also incorporated some stainless steel tie-downs. So this ute can still be used as a ute. We've also put some aluminium check checker plate on the insides of the tray sides so you don't actually scratch the paint or ding the outer skin. If you had something big and heavy in there, you don't want to ding that and make the paint chip. All stainless steel. Every, every bit of hardware on here is uh, stainless steel so it looks good and will last a long time. Okay, the toolboxes. Probably the best part of the tray for me. This is the things I like the most because on some utes, yeah, they're just toolboxes and you can put ropes and crap in there, but uh, these toolboxes are much more than that. They do have automatic lighting inside the box and inside the fuel filler compartment. And this is the second water pump, which I just told you about earlier. You can connect connect a hose onto that uh, filter underneath the car, turn the pump on, and you'll be sucking water into your tank via the filter. Um, the light is a nice spread in the box. It's not just um, one little baby LED. It's actually a whole strip put in under there. And we've also upholstered the uh, toolboxes as well at the owner's request. Central locking and a sneaky little ARB quick connect there, which is connected to that air system and it easily fits his electric chainsaw the battery charger for the chainsaw does not work on these unfortunately it's a shame but um, the charger for that is 240 volt and that will be um, fitted inside his canopy so again little door switch there and yeah they're very nice boxes okay this one Okay, this one here has the compressor, pretty standard for our trays, also been upholstered, and we've got the little cigarette and USB outlet there. These, these are always permanently powered, so good for charging um, your phones, drones, toys, cameras, torches, buddy, whatever. You can also just connect your camping lighting into that, and when you set up at camp, 
You've got permanent power there. You can still lock the car and everything. There's a compressor tucked in there nice and neatly. Um, the good thing about the compressor being in there is you can, obviously, it's nice and locked away and it's out of the way of the dust and dirt. And there's your second outlet for pumping up your tyres. Okay. In this little box here, we do have two gauges. Um, this is your uh, bag pressure and your tank pressure. So it's all digital and you've got your up and down switches for your two rear airbags. So... Turn the compressor on. We'll start to see that gauge go up. I'll let that on for a minute, but it is advised uh, not to run the compressor without the car running because they do draw a lot of current and you will end up with a flat battery. So I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. That will go up to 150 and switch off automatically. And this little red thing will go across to there and turn green when it gets to the top. And it will turn off when it gets up there. And then when you start using the compressor, it will drop down to about 140 and turn on by itself. That's all part of the compressor. I, uh, that's, a, that's why we use the ARB compressor, because it's nice and compact. And it already comes with the limit um, pressure switch and relays. And they also have a fan in there too to keep them cool. Um, you can't use the, tool, the compressor with the door shut. So it's going to starve the compressor of oxygen or starve it of air at least so when you are using the compressor just leave the door open i mean there's no point turning the compressor on anyway without the door open because you're going to need it for there or for there so um pumping the bags up is as easy as just pump up on the switches and then exhaust the switches from there you can level your car up at the back um i believe of having the good idea of having these uh, switches at the back of the car instead of in the cab is one, it's easily done, less joins, you don't have to run air into the cab, and two, it makes you get out of the car and check. It makes you get out of the car and check your load or your trailer and check the height of your tray, make sure it's nice and level, or for any leaks, and make sure it's all operating correctly. And then, obviously, we have the water pump. So if I open that now, it's gonna water's going to come out. So... I'm not going to do that now. All right, so at the back, trundle drawer. This is going to get a pulse yet. I just haven't had time. And we have snuck a little rear camera. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but there's a little, there's a little uh, rear view camera there. And there will also be a camera on top of the canopy when that's fitted. So that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so that pretty much uh, concludes um, my little video. hope you guys liked it. And when we have the canopy on, I will be doing another video as well. So um, we also have this one behind me that's uh, halfway done. And then the Brown Cruiser is just getting wired up. This thing here is going to be a work of art. And I'm... Really looking forward to showing you guys this one because that's got some cool features as well. So, um, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Again, like everyone else says on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.